Refugee settlement in Canada has a long history of a couple of hundred years. But after the after Vietnam War, when Canada decided to bring 60,000 refugees from Vietnam, known as a boat people, a handful of volunteer, uh, volunteers uh, led by uh, Margaret Chisholm and Father Moner and few others that they were very attached to the Catholic diocese with the help of the diocese actually they start helping these people upon arrival to settle them in Calgary. My mom was very active in the church and so she would help people but she also began volunteering for Catholic family services and that is when some of the immigrant or refugees actually started coming to Canada and she just was someone who helped people that was in her nature. She was busy all the time, uh, meeting flights, working, I know, working to get them in hotels, working to get them in English courses, and then finding furniture for when they did get out for places to live. So uh, she would, uh, through friends and family, uh, she would get them to donate furniture. And so wherever that furniture was, that's where we went to get that furniture, whether it was a bed or a chair or a lamp. So the first Margaret Chisholm Resettlement Centre was actually um, on the banks of the Elbow River in an old house that was owned by some priests. And, but it was very small and the need grew greater and so a, a larger facility was required. So they built the new uh, and current Margaret Chisholm Resettlement Centre. So the idea, the vision of creating a better place was something that the former CEO uh, Ann Wilson had and us as a, a, man, a senior manager, we were very uh, committed to make it happen. Obviously those days there were not there was much of uh, support from the government uh, as far as the grant goes and we were a very, very poor agency, we didn't even have $50,000 cash in hand, I'm just saying how it was. We managed to get, with the help, uh, support of one of the ministers in Alberta, we managed to secure a mortgage from CHMSC for $1.7 million. And that's all the money we had and we wanted to build a reception house. And at that time, Alan Wilson, the CEO, she actually got uh, appointed as a citizen job and she left the agency and responsibility fell on my shoulder and I was the one asked to actually act as a CEO and for, uh, later on I became a, a permanent CEO. We went to the city of Calgary, talked to the gentleman that was in charge of the corporate land. It was six o'clock when I was visiting the site, I called Colin McIsaac, which was the chair of the CCIs at the time, of the board. So he came and we looked at it and they said, okay, this is, would be fantastic. This is what we wanted. So we had the land and obviously we had to pay for it. The city actually sold the land to us for $172,000. So we gave the money. The other challenge suddenly came out that there was an article in Calgary Sun written by Mr. Paul Simon and he and few other people in the community that were strongly, strongly opposing us building the reception house in the current site. And the argument was that Bridgeland has enough of social service agencies there. We organized a town hall meeting at the city of Calgary. The deputy chief of police at that time, he actually came and explained to people, told the story that this, these three people, the CCIS, is operating a house to accommodate a refugee and it is a very safe house. There's no issues at all. They never had issue for the past seven, eight years that they had. So they agreed us to do it and we started building the reception house. We started in 1993 and it took us about 14, 15 months that the building was basically uh, came up and that was a dream, a dream for many of us to come through. You know, the house change and the colors change and, and we have to do some upgrades, but the people who work here didn't change. They have open heart and that's what is most important to be in this house and work with the people, make them comfortable. They are the people like us. They want the best for themselves. They were unfortunate in those circumstances what happened to them, but we try to make, you know, um, feel them good. I don't know, but I was always like to dance and, 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 and laugh with them. Then, you know, this, we had a lot of dancing and, and laughing and singing on the porch. What I remember most about my arrival at MCRC is the way that I felt. I felt welcomed, I felt supported, I felt heard, 
and most of all I felt a sense of belonging. And the staff at the time at MCRC took the time to listen to us. And I don't think that over the years we have lost that client-centered approach. From that moment forward, I always wanted to work with this organization and I was successful. I got an employment offer and started as a part-time employment counselor and at that time I never thought that at one point I would be in a position to lead the organization. I am very proud and impressed with the capacity that we have built over the years to support refugees when settling here in Calgary. So we're from Baghdad, which is the capital of Iraq. And um, so since the war happened in 2003, uh, I lost my father in 2006. In 2010, we were offered um, relocation to Canada through the UN as refugees. So we came uh, to Canada, to Calgary in 2010. And um, when we came, we were, uh, we were welcomed to the, the, the newcomer's uh, home here in Calgary. So my first night at MCRC, I remember my mom, she hugged both of us and then she was like, don't worry, everything will be okay. Which I know 100% that she was so scared because like she's in a place that she doesn't know anything and she doesn't know where to go. So the only place we know that was MCRC. Uh, we, we got our own place, right? Um, I remember that the first like night, I remember crying to my mom that oh, I want to go back, you know, because at that point it was just me, my mom and sister, and it felt like we were alone again, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, so since that time, which now feels like it's, it's, a, it's a whole lifetime, right? But uh, since then, you know, we, we got settled, we started uh, going to school, um, you know, kind of Canada becoming our home. I started going to university. Um, I studied uh, some uh, studied mining engineering at the University of British Columbia, and I uh, just recently graduated, actually. And um, yeah, you know, Canada feels more like home now, you know, than, than ever. But I believe, you know, having that, Going back to, to, to that event 14 years ago when we came and had that support system, I think that really helped a lot in, in you know, facilitating our, our journey here. 